Hello everybody, my name is Ace, I'll be your narrator, honorary voice actor, and a scared companion this evening as we continue Burrows. Last time around we uh, started Gabriel's route and we had a flashback of Sam and Grey when they were young. And uh, I think it's pretty clear now that Sam has drowned or, you know, perished in some way. Uh, and that's why they don't like bringing him up. And when we woke up, we were st stuck to the bottom of the pool and Gabe actually managed to save us. Who he now um, wants to be referred to as Chug instead of Gabe. So without further ado, let's get back on into it. How many times have I told you not to wear non-swim material clothing in the pool? That's a face. Okay, I need you to calm down, sir. Before you can reply, Coach slams the locker again, this time close enough to Chug's head to make him flinch. Am I talking to myself here? How many times? A thousand times, sir. I hear the lion sigh and the bench creak as he takes a seat next to Chug. You know I can't give you special treatment, Chunk. Chug, it's Chug. I know, I'm not asking for it. If you lost the weight like I'd asked you, you wouldn't need the shirt. You know we have rules about that, right? He's perfect the way he is. Yes, I've been exercising every day. I swear I've been trying. I want to lose it. I hear a wet head flop on his shoulder. A wet hand. Maybe cut down on the takeoffs and and she laid oz then. Okay. Tell Mama Sita to try cooking something healthy for once. Okay, first of all, bitch, enchiladas are crazy good. And also, they're fucking they're not unnutritious, so hate. And second of all, you just gonna be racist for what? Is boiling. Amen, Greg. Right. Now you and your friend there better get this cleaned up before you even think about hightailing it out of here. I freeze, how to be. I feel something step on my tail and yelp. It was poking out from under the bench this whole time. Land chuckles and I stand up, rubbing my tail while glaring back at it. Who's the boss, friend of yours? <laughs> yeah, he came to watch me practice, but fell in by mistake. Coach shoots me a look and I nod. I can't swim, got caught on something. Chuck saved my life, I'm lucky he was here. I put extra emphasis on saying Chug's name correctly. Coach chuckles and walks off without saying a word. We breathe a collective sigh of relief and Chug relaxes his muscles for the first time since the confrontation began. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I think you being here helped. Helped, so that was a good interaction between the two? None of this is sitting right with me. Look, let's just... Suddenly I hear the rolling of wheels bumping over an uneven tile. Coach rounds the corner again, this time pulling a janitor's cart behind him. You two weren't thinking of skipping out without cleaning this up, were you? <laughs> of course not. He jogs over to the cart and grabs a mop. Coach grabs a bucket and waves it in my direction. You too, newbie. I grumble and walk over to him, snatching the bucket out of his hands. Is it policy at this school that teachers punish their students with the menial tasks, or is it that you is that just how you entertain yourself? The lion's smile falls into a grimace, and he sizes me up. Considering we're all adults here, and you're not a student, I could have the cops escort you out of here instead. How's that sound? Chuck squeezes in between us and hands me a rag, laughing nervously. No, no, we definitely don't want that. Come on, dude, let's just finish this up. His smile is as wide as ever, but the pain behind his eyes made me want to cry. 
This must be something that's been going on a long time if he hasn't already told this coach to go fuck himself. Poor Gabe. The disgruntled feline scoffs at us and walks off, leaving us alone, finally. We don't speak for a few minutes, chug earnestly, mopping up puddles of water while I wring out towels into the bucket. Eventually, it's too much to bear, and I break the silence. Chug, why do you... I don't want to talk about it. Another long stretch of silent cleaning. I can't stop thinking about giving the coach a taste of his own medicine. The wash-up has been. Why would he even put get Chug on the team if he didn't meet the requirements? Not to mention that I've seen him swim, and he was amazing at it. Whatever extra flab he has didn't slow him down whatsoever. I feel like I've been wringing the same towel out for 20 minutes now. My finger joints are killing me. Suddenly, Chug clears his throat. Um... Yeah? He isn't always like this. I think he picks on me because he wants me to be better, but... He hangs on to that last word. But... <laughs> I don't really know. <laughs> I was hoping I'd have a reason. I th I'd have thought of a reason by now. Maybe he is just a... Uh... He looks around before continuing in a low voice. I know, I know what cabron means, but I don't know, like, the saying here, so. Of course, I'm the last generation of my family to not speak Spanish. Here we go, Google. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, no, it was, that was about, about what I was expecting. F fucking bastard. Huh? What does that mean? He scratches his head. <laughs> A fucking asshole. <laughs> well, sometimes I gotta say it in Spanish, or it doesn't feel rude enough, you know? I nod, sort of understanding the logic. Whenever I was late on rent, I'd get yelled at in a teary out of French per prerogatives before I could get a word in edgewise. Well, I'd say we're just about done cleaning. Anything left should evaporate by tomorrow. Chug shoots up and grabs the towel out of my hand, tossing it towards the cart. MJ! Oh, it misses and lands on the ground with a flop. He shrugs and walks over, putting it away properly. Guess I'm not cut out for the NBA. Uh, are you ready to dry off now? Are there even any dry towels left? Surfer bro voice is going to be very, very hard. He chuckles and waves me over. <laughs> not like that, silly. Come on, the dry room's this way. I cock my head puzzled. I have no idea what to expect. I follow him down the hall and through the shower room. Past that, there's yet another hallway with a heavy iron door at the end. This way will be way faster and better for your fur, too. We walk inside. It looks like a sauna with benches and racks with clothes hangers on them. There are four wire lamps sitting in each corner of the room, connected to a bigger vent on the ceiling by a tangle of wires. Chug closes the door behind me and turns the handle. I hear a click coming from the door frame followed by a low hiss. So, uh, what is all this? He grins and walks over to a dial on the wall, cranking it up to 70 degrees. Don't worry, I hadn't seen one myself until I joined the swim team. Fancy, huh? The lamps warm the room up and the vents suck out the moisture. You should only need like five minutes here and you'll be good to go. Wow, that's amazing. I'd long dreamed of such a contraption since my childhood days were mostly spent swimming in mucky lakes and ponds. The thicker the fur, the easier it is for mildew to form, and the Louisiana climate is extremely humid to boot. 
Long story short, if I don't use at least eight towels after swimming, I'm gonna smell like low tide until my next shower. I hear some mechanisms churning to life behind the walls and the heat lamps start to glow a dull orange. Chug whips off his shirt and hangs it on the rack before sitting down on the bench. You know, the clothes dry faster if you take them off. Then my face turned red. You don't say. Mm -hmm. it's no pressure though. Okay. I mean, uh, I'd rather no. Okay, you just you take off what's necessary. Not we should both get naked. That is, this seems necessary. I'd rather be dry than chaste right now. I peel off the layers and wring out the excess water before hanging them up next to Gabe's shirt. It actually feels good to be nude after having those heavy, wet clothes suffocating me during that heated chat with Coach earlier. Gabe smiles and pats the bench next to him, moving his tail out of the way so I can sit. Man, you're ripped for such a tiny guy. Looking good, little dude. Man, he's too cute. My face feels flushed. I shake off the embarrassment and sit next to him. His skin is cool and I feel a shiver go up my spine as our thighs touch. I really, really don't want to get hard right now. That would be really, really embarrassing, so I think you should not. This is a totally normal thing. I can get through this without being a pervert. I sure hope so. Chuck glances downward and then back at me, grinning childishly. Bruh. Whoa, maybe not so little, eh, little dude? Shit. <laughs> um, thanks. He laughs hard, holding his belly to keep it from shaking. Not trying to be weird or anything, it's just... Well, let's just say I see people's dicks pretty often being on a sports team. Uh-huh. So I have a good frame of reference, and you're sitting pretty high up on the list. Why is there a list? I'm flattered, but this is a lot to take in at once. Wait, why is he looking at dicks unless... Um, so are you? He places a big arm around me and pulls me closer, whispering, even though we're alone in here. Shh. Yes. <laughs> but don't worry, I'm not gonna, like, jump your bones or anything. That's a stereotype. No, you're good. I didn't get that feeling at all. Glad to know I'm among my peers if you catch my drift. I pet his pecs and he lets me go, leaning on my knees. Still looking downward. What? Nothing, you just confirmed that you're at the top of the list. <laughs> I look down and... Uh, well, well played. I look around for a towel or something, trying to cover it with my hands, but accidentally grazing it. <laughs> Great, you are just a walking fucking hell, dude. I'm gonna cover my mouth immediately. Just kill me now. I would agree. Dude, you're fine. You think you're the only guy who's ever popped a boner in here before? Hell, I've even jerked off in here a few times when it's just me. That door locks until the session's over. <laughs> Think, yeah, I agree. Thinking about him jerking off is definitely not going to get this little problem to go away. So, well, I guess I'll just let it be then. I reluctantly sit back down, dig slapping against my stomach before resting at its stubborn neutral position. <laughs> I don't mind, it's just guy stuff. If you want to take care of it, I'll just look this way and... Not helping! He laughs and we sit awkwardly until the timer dings. Between all of the dick talk, I actually dried off completely. My clothes too, though they were a little wrinkled. Dressed and only vaguely smelling of chlorine, we head back towards the locker room. I follow Chug to his locker and he gathered, gathers his things, pulling an outfit I recognize out of a black gym bag. Just try not to get another stiffy while I'm changing. No promises. I could watch him strip all day, but it was more reassuring to see him wearing the clothes I first saw him in. He struggles for a second to close the final button on his shorts, but manages to suck his belly in long enough to hook it through. <sighs> Good to go. 
and grabs his shorts and a few other items, tosses them in a bag, zips it up, and throws it over his shoulders. He pauses as if he's about to say something to me and stops, looking away. We stood there for a minute, neither of us really sure of what to say. Well, I... Wait, I almost made him country. Well, I guess I have to go now. Yeah, I imagine you're busy, school and all. <laughs> Not really, I'm meeting some friends at the mall. Kind of promised I'd go. Hey, Chug, it's okay. Keeping your promises is important. Promises? I guess I'll just stay here until tomorrow. Huh? No way. I'll, like, come back for you once we're done hanging out. A couple of hours tops. Caesar might want us to come over and smoke, though. Hmm. Why would they need to go somewhere specific just to smoke cigarettes? No, not cigarettes. <laughs> Don't change your plans for my sake. I'll be okay. It's not the strangest place I've ever stayed in before. He seems dissatisfied leaving things like that, but we don't have a lot of options here. Even if I left the campus, it's likely I'd get lost wandering around LA, and then we wouldn't be able to find each other again. Between waiting here for Chug or trying to chase down that coach for answers, I'd rather just wait. Classes are done for the day, so you're, we're probably the only ones left in the building now. You could, like, sleep on one of the gym mats or something. I pat his shoulders, sad that we couldn't hang out more. I have a thousand questions about everything, but I don't expect him to uproot his entire life for me. No one else ever has, and nor should they have. He turns the head out, and I wave him off. He looks back at me a few times, sadly, before he's out of view. It takes a few seconds before it all hits me. My body feels heavy and I slam into a locker, my head buzzing as I try to digest everything that just happened. I was chased by some nightmare and ended up in that place. I met everyone and then they disappeared. I picked up Chug's card and was teleported to California. Have we gotten any timeline in this? I don't think we have. No, we haven't. And now I'm playing the part of the secret pet being hidden away from the world. My instinct is screaming at me to forget all of this and run home, apologize to everyone for the note and pretend like nothing happened. But part of me wants to see where this goes. All of this must be connected somehow. Me being here must be for a reason. And if Virgil's responsible, that, could, that means Chug could be in danger. I just had a horrible thought, but I can't dwell on that right now. I head back out towards the pool. I was so in shock earlier, I didn't realize it was outdoors. A warm breeze hits me as I open the door, welcoming me to my first view of where I'd ended up. Huh. Excuse me. Rows of buildings surround the massive pool area. The pool itself is Olympic size, the water an impossibly bright shade of blue. It's so blue, it makes me uncomfortable. Walking the length of it, I realize how fast Chug must have run to pull me out of the deep end in time. The locker room entrance was at least a three-minute walk from the diving section, plus he still had to carry me back inside. Maybe it was just adrenaline, or is he just that strong? I stare out at the area sectioned off for swimming laps. I could easily imagine him zipping back and forth in seconds his fins slicing through the water like butter. I reach the gate leading to the rest of the campus and close it behind me, pausing to listen for any people before continuing on. It really is dead. The absence of stragglers on campus this huge isn't lost on me, and I wonder if there's an event or something going on. I want to get a better view from up high, but I don't want to risk walking into a random building and getting caught. I better wait until dark to head inside. I walk further down the cement road, past some empty grass fields, when something in the distance catches my eye. Bleachers. A football field, maybe? I bet I could get a better look at where I am from up there. 
I pick up the pace and start jogging towards an opening behind one of the goalposts. My suspicions were correct, and I trot onto the grassy field covered in chalk lines. A single lonely row of bleachers makes up the southern wall. This must be a practice field or something. No way the whole school could fit in there. I shrug and start trotting up the row of seats, the blue sky overhead growing milkier as layers of atmosphere come into focus in the distance. My thighs start to burn. I'm really out of shape. Or maybe I'm just exhausted. Either way, I reach the top out of breath and holding my knees. Fuck, okay. Tomorrow I'm going to ask Chug to work out with me. I finally look up to see a blurry city in the distance. The buildings are taller than I expected. Like, really tall. The city itself stretches out beyond where I can see. Tiny moving lights that must be cars cluster along raised stretches of road that intersect in dizzying ways. I try to look for ways to enter the city on foot, but only see more highways branching from it like an octopus's tentacles. I strain my eyes to get a better idea of what I'm looking at, but the bottom half of the city is distorted from the heat. I tug at my collar, now feeling my scalp burning from the intense sunlight. It really is the Sunshine State. Oh wait, no, that's Florida. Well, this should be the Sunshine State. There we go, jeez. Kind of a tongue twister. Sunshine State. Feeling like I'm melting, I head back down the steps, stopping to sit on the bottom row. The wall of seats above me casts a shadow across the field, creating a pocket of cool air I could exist in comfortably. Well, I guess there's no way to get out of here without a car. Could always try hitchhiking if things with Chug don't. Hey! Huh, is that... I look around frantically, his voice is echoing throughout the campus, and I can't pinpoint where it's coming from. Little dude, behind you! I walk around the bleachers and find him leaning on the wall, drinking from a tiny can, holding a strange-looking bag in his other hand. Chug? Why are you back so soon? He chugs the- oh, I get it now. He chugs the rest of his drink and crushes it against his forehead before tossing it in a nearby trash can. Oh, I didn't feel comfortable just leaving you here, dude. Uh, it was a bogus move. I walk over and pat him on the shoulder. There's no reason he should blame himself. <laughs> it's fine. What else were you supposed to do? Yeah, I don't know why you expected him to just abandon you, Gray. He's way too nice for that. You're my friend. I'm not leaving you again. I'm... Again? Did you... Yeah, uh, bits and pieces. Uh, the second I started riding away from here, I just felt really sad. Like I was leaving something really important behind. Fuck. <laughs> Like, I was leaving something really important behind in that I'd made this mistake before. A tear trickles down his face and he wipes it away angrily. Any lingering shred of doubt I had about him just melted away. I'm really trying to remember, dude, I swear. He hits himself in the head with surprising force, making me jump back. The intrusive thoughts are winning. It's just stuck in my dumb old head. He rears back to hit himself again, and I grab his arm before he can. I know, I believe you. Just stop it. He puts his arm down and nods, still sniffling. So, you want me to come with you, then? <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't let you fend for yourself out here alone. It wouldn't be right. You can come with me to the mall and meet my other friends. What are they like? <laughs> A little weird, but they're good people for the most part. Most part, uh-oh. I'm sure once they get to know you, we'll all get along. I think back to my own blended group of childhood friends and nod. I'm willing to put in the work if they're people Chug trusts. Suddenly, my stomach growls loudly. He laughs and dips into the bag he brought. 
I had a feeling you need something to eat, even if you decided to stay here. I stopped at the tam oh, tamale con. How, how did I how did I get British out of that? I stopped at the tamale card on the on Le Conter. Le Conte. Interesting. I don't know that. I think I'm assuming that's actually a street, but I don't know how to pronounce that. Here. He hands me a little green bundle wrapped with corn silk. The smell hits me and my mouth begins to water. I haven't had a tamale since I was a kid. Some migrant workers came through New Orleans after a huge drought struck Texas. The woman set up these little stands, and me and the gang would buy as many as we could carry. I tried to explain the flavor to our chefs, but they could not They could never properly replicate it. He stares at me as I carefully unwrap it and dig into its contents, savoring every well-seasoned bite. I lick my fingers clean and grab another. Tamales are fucking fire. Chug laughs and gives me a thumbs up, nodding in approval. Whoa, little dude, knows what's up. I sort of expected you to just pie through the husk. <laughs> what kind of monster would do that? Let's just say there are people who don't know any better and leave it at that. I know what he meant. Can't blame him for thinking I'd fall into that category just looking at me. I shudder, thinking back to the time Jules tricked me into eating a raw corn cob. Ooh. That mistake stayed with me for a whole week. We eat a few more tamales, tossing the remains in the bag. Once we're done, he tosses the whole thing in the trash, to my bewilderment. Oh, wait, you don't use the bag again? Huh? Dude, it's just plastic. I'm not that poor. <laughs> but damn, what the fuck? <laughs> huh? There's no way that bag is made of plastic. I'd seen the material around my dad's shop. It's rock solid. 